Freddy Ricky. Oh, Freddy, come on, boy! Yeah! What up, y'all? And welcome back to another one. It's extremely windy out today. Holy smokes! Just got the old truck washed. <sighs> when you tell them don't put tire shine on, and they do anyways, I got one of those memberships to the automatic car wash deals. As hunters, this is not a good thing. Dirt roads, not good. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Back here at the lodge. Turn some lights on in here. <sighs> but, my goodness, it's windy. We got to uh, stay inside. Let's open the door. But on today's episode, like I'm saying, uh, for one, we got new lodge plans. I want to go over all of the new plans with y'all. I asked if you guys wanted to see it. You said yes, and a lot of you have some great ideas. So, during this video, at any point, if you have any plans, any ideas, any good ones that you feel like I need to know about? Drop your comment down below and let us all know. Let me know, I'd appreciate it. So after we get done going over all the plans for the shop, all the new plans for the shop, and they're not just the plans, they are the sit in concrete plans that we have, the new ones. I've had a lot of help uh, with the new plans and, and just trying to understand how to use this space to the best of my ability, you know what I mean? Also getting the bang for my buck. And then after we get done with this, we're gonna meet the new head guide, my new head guide for my guide service here at Sand Hill Flyways. So we're gonna go through a story, we're gonna meet him, we're gonna go over our relationship, how long we've known each other, uh, everything. So basically just give you the whole rundown on him and who he is what he stands for and why he's going to be here with us and honestly i'm thrilled to share this information with you because i would want no one else helping me i'm serious uh having this individual uh really gave me the courage to do this so let's get in uh let's get into the new plans for this place all righty guys so first and foremost this right here is going to be a bathroom so this is going to be a whole new bathroom. Basically, you'll come in here. There'll be the lavatory, sink, the, uh, yes, the shower, toilet, and then a wall will come out. And then right here, this is where we'll have washer and dryer. Now, right here, we'll have some shelves for sheets, towels, all that stuff. So this room is spoken for, ready to go. Now, when you come out, What's gonna come out of here is a hallway. So imagine this being a big wall. So basically from uh, right here, straight across is going to be a big wall. And right here, underneath that wall, there's gonna be a ceiling. And right here is a hallway. And right here will be a door. Psh, open this up. This will be one massive bedroom. And then right here, we'll have a big interchange spot with a doorway going into another bedroom right here. The hallway is going to curve over right here, the edge of the wall. Boom. So you can get into what is this restroom that already exists. Plus, we're redoing it. All new everything in there. And then you can still get to this already finished bedroom. So imagine hallway. There's a door going in here. Now this room, imagine a ceiling, regular eight foot ceiling. This will be the mud room. This will be the locker room. This is where clients store their bibs, their muddy boots, their guns. There will be wall hangers, little storage area for your guns. There will be benches along the lockers. So you can sit down, take off your boots, put on your waders, take them off, whatever you need to do. So here's the plan. Let me, let me walk you through it. This is the main entry. You come in. And so right here, this will be the entry door to take off all your muddy stuff, to hang your stuff up, to put your gun away, to put your blind bag away. This is that room. So you'll come out of the room again, hallway, transition area, hallway going out, bedroom, new bathroom. Let's move up to uh, the, next, the next part. So these stairs, they're going bye-bye. We're yanking them out and there'll be living area up top still. 
So imagine these stairs going away and this wall that I've been talking about, th there'll be a landing right here and then the stairs will go up. And where this hallway is, there'll be another hallway above it. With a, basically the stairs will come up, it'll have a little landing area, and then the hallway will go back. So above this room and above this room, there'll be a bedroom, bedroom, and then back there, y'all have been up there, another bedroom. So let's go up there and I'll explain it a little more. Again, these stairs will go bye-bye. And up here, if you can imagine, right in the middle, right here, from here to here will be a hallway. And it'll be probably about down to here, right above that vent. That'll be the floor of the hallway. So right here, you'll have a one step going down. And then you'll have the entry door into that room and into that room. And then right here, like I said, you'll have a door coming in. And there'll be a bed here with a lamp and everything you need. And then another bed here with a lamp and everything you need. So we'll at least get two beds up here. Now, everything's gonna be redone, all new flooring in all of the new rooms, but this stairway is going to look beautiful. This whole building area, whole living area, is gonna take up almost half of the shop. So, I'm stuck at a little turning point. Uh, I don't know whether to spend the money to close up both of these doors, Originally I was going to and then uh, Wade was like my buddy Wade y'all know him. He was like dude. I would leave this door who cares um, Maybe put in a glass, you know, like a window Replace one of the panels in the door, you know over there replace one of these put a window in That could be cool, right? So I'm at a standstill Do I get rid of both these doors or just save my money and leave them? I don't think they're that bad of an eyesore. You know, once everything's built in, uh, we're gonna have sconces, we're gonna have mood lighting everywhere, blah, blah, blah. So, I need your guys' help. Do I close in the doors? And what I mean close up is, you're talking full framed in, sheet rocked everything. And then on the outside, you would have to match the metal. The metal would have to match all the way across. And the doors would literally have to go away, which means a bunch more money. And I, I have a budget to do this, but I don't want it to be out of the ballpark. You know, I, I really want it to be nice, but I, I can't afford too much. You know what I mean? But moving on, that's the living area. That's, that's the rundown of the big living area. Now, right here, again, this will be the landing for the stairs going up. So right here, starting right here, against this whole entire wall will be cabinets. In front of this window will be kitchen sink, big kitchen sink, big faucet. And then we'll have right here, a uh, dishwasher, and then stove, and microwave, and then refrigerator. Again, landing, stairs going up. So, we'll have an overhang up top. Uh, overhangs and we'll have some mounts up there some uh, can lights underneath that and then we'll have an island on this side of the kitchen right here it's going to be like a 15 16 foot long big island basically like a big bar island and i'm going to hang a drop ceiling above it with some pretty can lights underneath that as well so this island will have bar stools all the way around it this is where Everybody will gather up to eat right here. Boom. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be grand. It's gonna be huge. And then on this side of it, we're out here, this will be the living area. We'll have two big sectionals, some recliners, some nice comfy rugs, chairs, lamps, huge flat screen TV or TVs. I don't know which way to go yet. And some awesome sconces on the wall. Uh, we'll probably get rid of this. This will actually go for sure. And we're gonna build a little wall that comes out, probably a foot, so we can um, put all of our new plumbing, all of our new electric behind it. This, the furnace, this will all be walled up. We'll have a little access door to get to our panel. But this will be a wall, and then with a little opening for the spillway. So, it'll look a lot better. 
All this will be covered up. This will all be cabinets. All this stuff will be covered up. A wall will be built in front of it, so the plumbing for the kitchen, electrical, all that stuff will be hidden. We're on our way, boys. We're on our way. I, need, I, had to, uh, I had to stop and catch my breath. I just rambled. And I rambled because I'm excited. I'm so excited for this. Y'all know how excited I am, how long it's taken to get to this point. It's awesome. It's a miracle. It's a dream come true. So, uh, if you guys have any ideas for anything I just rattled off, anything to help me save some money, that's for sure, drop a comment down below. Let me know. If you're a business wanting to get a hold of me and, and you guys want to help out the lodge, maybe with some material, I've already had that happen. Big shout out to Moen. We'll be doing a video on that here real soon. Be expecting that. We might do it on the next video. How about that? But hit me up. My email is down in the description below if you guys want to help out. <sighs> let's, uh, let's get our new head guide in here. Let's give him a, let's give him a good working over. Let's do it. Let, let's give him some, a good questionnaire so you guys can get to know him, so you guys can get to trusting him. I just ran him through all the plans of the new lodge. Did you? Yeah. Did you guys like the new plans or not? It's Gerald. Y'all know who Gerald is. He's a new head guide of Sand Hill Flyway. He's, he's going to be the man. He's going to be over literally every hunt. He's going to be over everything at the lodge. Yeah, it'll be a good time. Clients, enjoyment. I don't think I'm going to mess with dinner too much. It's going to be... <laughs> I can cook some. Yeah. But, but enjoyment factor, the, the, the party back here at the lodge, when I have to go and edit a video, he's going to be here. You know, one thing that's really bothered me about you being here oh God. isn't you being here it's about some of the negative comments we've had about just show them show them your tattoos oh, yeah. show them show them your neck the fool has them everywhere and why why you own a tattoo shop part of well part of it yeah piercing wise yes he owns so let's get this clear real quick gerald owns the piercing side of one of the largest tattoo shops in wichita kansas yeah. so that being said that's been his business and how he makes his money, his trade of work before hunting ever existed for you, pretty much. Pretty much. I mean, well, about, as an income. About the same time, really. It was kind of the same time. Yeah, we're pretty seasonal, so it works out. You know, like in the, the winter, the tattoo shop slows down. That's when I get busy taking people hunting, and it kind of works out, you know. So basically, it just goes, I try to stay busy year round, so right. half and half. It works right. out real good. What I'm talking about the negative comments though, there's, there was, there's a handful, not very many. I'm not gonna complain too much, but there were some viewers on, I think it was our first turkey hunt we did this season. They were like, oh, neck tattoos, ew, ew, face tattoos. Now let's get this straight. You're not proud of that one face tattoo. Oh no, no, this he one's wants it gone. It's getting removed. That was a mistake when you were young. 18. Right. 18 or 19. Just know that, know a book before you just judge the cover. Gerald can out hunt uh, most of you guys, me as well. Um, he is a very, very well-mannered individual in front of clients. You guys are, all the clients that I've already booked, you're gonna love Gerald. It's a good time, man. So I had to, uh, I had to take a little break and regather myself here. So um, I, I, I also had some comments of people going, what are you doing? Just finding help off the street, Bobby, blah, blah, blah. Who would, who would hire a tattooed up individual to be with paying clients? Gerald has guided some of the most high-end clients, high-end to father son. It has. It oh, doesn't yeah. matter. Everybody. How all many? Over the place. Take Every... a take a wild guess. How many paying customers in your history of guiding do you think that you have guided? A wild guess. No idea. So play conservative. At least two to three hundred a year for. 11 years? <laughs> it could be well over 10,000. Maybe snow goose season, I run a lot. Uh, yeah, even work. snow goose, Arkansas, yeah. you're going Arkansas. through. Every group's 12 to 15 guns. Well, no, it's eight. It's eight, but it's a new group every three or every five days. Gotcha. The man's been doing it for a long time. He loves what he does. That's why he's here. That's why we're here together doing it. Uh, we've hunted together for six, seven, Oh, Eight no, years. Have to go back. The first ones were. South the first town one there. was on Elliott's Field. Yep. The silo, maybe, maybe before that too. I think there's one before it. That was one of the. the it was first before one. the YouTube channel existed. Yeah, that was the first like 
holy crap, this is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so it's been well over five years, I would guess. So long story short, uh, things happen for a reason and things fall into place. Look at this, you know, it, it'd be a lot different, I feel, if this is what I'm getting at. It'd be a lot different if I was to just four years ago start a guide service. I would, I would not have known what I was doing, but now with people like Gerald helping me, Gerald in particular, not people, but Gerald in particular, we're gonna get it done. And we've evolved and, and I've grown into being able to do this. And I'm glad y'all are here to experience it. Probably around like 5,000. So you're thinking five, like- 6,000. Five or 6,000 total. Yeah, probably. Okay, that's fair. Over 11 years. If you if think about this, five to 6,000 clients that he's paying clients that he's had to try to make happy Yep, try please. to yeah try to please try to provide a good hunt what happens not all hunts are good Not all hunts are good my yep. job is to i can't control weather i can't control what birds do i basically make sure everything's set we have all the equipment that you need to have a good hunt and put us in the best scenario that we can which is, means is scout job. our living butts oh, yeah. off miles and, and miles and miles and pay money to lease properties. We're, they, we're going to do a lot of what they call day leasing. And it's where a lot of the big farmers around here, they, they like day leasing because guides can come through, pay just for that day's hunt and then move on. It's not a long-term agreement. Uh, the locals can still come through and hunt. Just gives a little bit of fuel money in that farmer's pocket. So we're going to be doing a lot of that this year. What are you doing on my golf cart? Just hanging out. Just, ha just hanging out? <laughs> if y'all don't know, his name's Bodie. Tell him your name. I'm Bodie. Heck yeah, you're gonna be a big duck hunter, aren't you, bub? Yeah, buddy. Freddy, are you ready to go to the trainer? I've been warning y'all. I think I've been warning y'all to try to prepare myself for Freddy not to be here for quite some time. It's gonna be that's gonna be hard, isn't it, Bubba? Mm -hmm. Freddy's gonna be gone for a while. Are you gonna be okay with that? Is that all right if if Freddy's gone for a while? Are you sure? Okay, it's about that time, Freddy. Freddy's going to uh, the trainer. For quite some time it's gonna hurt the heart but i'll be able to see him a lot because a lot of you guys want to see training videos with fred you all want to learn so do i so we're going to do them together but uh i want to give a huge shout out for gerald for doing that uh i i asked him i was like are you okay with me you know really putting you out there to um describe to you guys who he is i i think he he deserved that because like i said there were some negative comments the last few videos that Gerald and I did, the turkey hunting videos, the morel mushroom videos. Uh, there were some ne negative comments that really, really bugged me. And uh, I just wanna tell you guys, guys be open-minded in life. Don't be a caveman. If your parents were racist, that don't mean you have to be racist too. If your parents or someone that had a lot of influence over you for a lot of time, if they were negative about people in general, that doesn't mean that you have to inherit that as well. Guys, stay positive, always. Stay humble, always. Don't judge a book by its cover. Uh, that ugly, tattered, torn, tatted up face book that you're judging by its cover might be one of the best individuals that you'll meet in your life. And I've, I've come to find that. I used to be, a, I used to be pretty darn negative, I, I won't lie. And having this YouTube channel, it's taught me a bunch over the last four years of my life. Be positive, guys. Look on the bright side first. Expect the positive side out of things before you just expect the negative. That's, that's not the way life works. Well, we're in the old unit. Going back on the North 40. The North 40. <laughs> Hi, kids. Yep. Oh, we're in Gerald's K&M Defender 800. It is a six-seater. I bet your clients love this bad boy. It's way better than walking, yeah. especially in Arkansas. Way better than walking, that's, that's for right. sure. But, but we'll be using this to get everybody in and out of the field, all the decoys, the whole dive bomb spread, the whole nine yards. What? 
Well, you ain't eating a popsicle. That's why you're cold, Bodie. Jeez, you came and picked her up, took her for one day, and look how muddy she is. Jeez, you're hard on stuff, dude. But uh, a lot of you have been asking for calling tips, and oh, yeah. I don't do calling tips anymore. I don't really do them videos anymore, but you're going to hear a lot of calling out of Gerald and I. We're going to do a lot of team calling this year while yeah. guiding. You know, he's been trying to make me learn better. I'm not very good <laughs> at teaching. I don't know how to explain what to do. I just do it. Yeah. And it it's, just kind of works. It's, it's a lot of trial and error. Yeah. It's a lot of muscle memory in your mouth. Yes. That's yeah, it. For that's sure. A, that's what it is. I always have people ask me, Bob, what's the go-to tip for learning a goose call? This, It's time. Just time and practice. I, uh, I have a couple favorite people that I really like to listen to. Um, can say names, can't we? Yeah, well, heck yeah. John David Stanley is probably my favorite. Forrest is yes. Forrest also. Forrest Carpenter. Forrest Carpenter. I probably listen to clips of him just off their Instagram. Just go go find a video of them hunting and listen to them call. Yes. You know, there's one particular from JD that I've listened to 9 million times. Yep. I feel like our calling similar. He's significantly better. Definitely similar though. Yep. So you can learn strictly from just watching. Yep. And this is particularly what we're talking about is lesser calling. So a lot of high pitched, not no honk or calling, high pitched, squawky, lesser calling. Get the squawking. <coughs> now, he sounds amazing. I've been learning a lot from Gerald. And he, like he said, JD Stanley, Forrest Carpenter. Those are guys that he put me on to and told me, listen to these guys. And so, this is what we're going to be doing, small geese. like oh yeah I'm ready I'm ready I've been getting laid back baby you should know that I don't need your criticism pessimism I've been keeping it on the DL got a girl that